up until now, we've been able to say, you know, that defeats a problem. I just can't solve that problem. My model won't solve it. That ends today. Today, I show you how to solve every single one of those pizza problems so that you'll never have to say, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it. You'll be able to do it. And that involves this idea of voltage. Let's start with this problem that we uh, started last day. Um, we finished the first side. We haven't started the second side. Let's just remind ourselves what we found on the first side. When we were comparing A versus B, we said that A was brighter and it was an all versus part argument. A got all of the current through the battery, uh, B just got part of the current through the battery. When we were comparing B versus C, what we're talking about is the splitting ratio right here. Does it split 50-50 or some other way? And if some other way, which side gets more than half? Well, when we solve problems like that, we draw the two paths identical. So this would be A, B, D, C, and E. And in that case, the current would split here 50-50. And then we ask, what's missing? Well, there's this extra bowl on a new path that was added in parallel. That's going to lower the resistance of that path on the right, and that means it's going to split with more than half going the easy way, less than half going the hard way, and current favors the path of least resistance, so C is brighter. When we compare B versus D, we just say they're in series, so they're equal. Uh, when we compare D versus E, we got a pizza problem. D got all of the small pizza, E got exactly half of the large pizza. We couldn't answer the question. Before the end of this lecture, we will be able to answer that question. Now, turn the page over. Okay. Does anyone not have a copy of this? Are there people here that didn't bring their... it from point one to point two, connected. And my first question with your clicker is, does C go out yes, no, or I don't know? Yes, no, or I don't know? Thank you. 
than half of the current through the battery. Okay? Now, let's, let's do the last part of this, the last page of this problem. What happens to bulb A when I add a path to this circuit? It gets brighter. I've added a path, I've lowered the resistance of the circuit, the current through the battery goes up and A is an indicator for the battery. B goes out because it's shorted out. What about D? Brighter. 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 It's now getting more than half of the current through the battery. It used to get less than half. Its share of the current through the battery went up. Oh, and the current through the battery also went up. Those two changes are in the same direction. It's getting a bigger share of more total current. So it gets brighter. But when we play the same game with C, we get a pizza problem. The C share went down from more than half to less than half. But what it's sharing, the battery current went up. 
So one of those changes is trying to make C dimmer, one's trying to make it brighter. We can't tell with our, our current model which is going to win. So that's a pizza problem. Now, here's another pizza problem we encountered. When we were trying to compare the brightness of bulb B to the brightness of bulb D, we found that we were comparing all of the small pizza, there's a small pizza, to more than half of a large pizza, where that's the large pizza. And it just didn't work. The current model failed. So let's try something else. And that something else is voltage. If I take a Okay. I should not have wasted time setting up that circuit. I apologize. It just struck me that, hey, I could have. Doesn't mean I should, but I did. Too late to turn back now. Okay. If I have a single bulb circuit, uh, what I find is that if I measure the voltage across the battery uh, with this digital voltmeter, what I get is about 12 volts. It's trying to be a 12 volt battery, but it's an 11.83 uh, volt battery. Okay? Now, we take that 12 volts and we remember that volt is just a fancy way of saying joules for each coulomb. And we interpret that as the battery giving each coulomb 12 joules of energy. Not kinetic energy, making it move faster, but electric potential energy. It's just like moving a boulder to the top of the cliff. Here it's being moved to the top of the electrical cliff. Just like the boulder wants to fall back down to the bottom of the cliff, the charge wants to fall back down to the bottom of the electrical cliff, back to the negative terminal of the battery. If we measure the voltage across the uh, bulb, what we get in a perfect world is 12 volts. What you see in an imperfect world is that it's a little bit less. Now you're going to be making measurements in tutorial this week and, and what you're going to be looking for is patterns where things are, are significantly different or significant or reasonably the same. Okay? Now, if we had perfect wires, if we had wires that were great big fat wires made of platinum, if you pay more tuition. <laughs> if we had really, really good wires, then this voltage here would be exactly the same as that voltage there. And if we measured the voltage difference across the wires, we would always get zero. But with these wires, we're going to get something a little bit bigger than zero. Just a little bit. And that's what accounts for this reading being different than that reading. We're going to assume on exams and homeworks that we have perfect wires, and so this would be 12 joules per coulomb, or 12 volts. So when it's measuring that across the battery versus across the light, is it maybe losing voltage across the light, gaining the battery? Uh, what we find is that um, it gains voltage across the battery, and everywhere else it loses, drops voltage. And so uh, the voltage drop across this wire here is going to be something a little bit bigger than zero. The voltage drop across this wire here is also going to be a voltage drop a little bigger than zero. And that, those two contributions added to the bulb will equal the 12 volts of the bulb. Thank you. Okay. Now the cartoon that we carry around in our head are these coulombs going around like dump trucks, picking up energy in the battery and dumping them in the bulb. Now it doesn't actually 
get lost in the bowl, but gets transferred, transformed, if you will, into thermal energy. And then that thermal energy causes the filament to glow, uh, causing it to be transformed into light energy. Okay? Now, what about the currents? Well, what goes around comes around. And we have exactly the same current through the bulb as we have through the battery. Now, if I have two uh, bulbs that are identical, meaning they came from the same factory on the same day with the same worker working on them, in that case, what I'm going to get in a perfect world is I'm going to get 12 volts across the battery and you see that these are less bright than the single bulb. In a perfect world, I would get 12 volts across the battery. Here I get 11.85. And across each bulb, what I would get is about half of that. So you see here, I get about 6 volts. Oops, i got to hold it still here. About 6 volts. Now, if I double that, I'm going to get more than 12, right? Well, you see that these bulbs are not completely identical. But you add those two up, and you get about the same as the battery voltage. Okay? Now, they have less glow, so they have less flow. And what goes around comes around, so the current is smaller there. Now if I measure the voltage, I get 12 volts there, I get 6 volts and 6 volts. Now, let's talk about sharing. The current in the circuit is shared between the two bulbs. Like a book or like a pie? Like a book. The voltage of the battery is shared by the two bulbs. Like a book or like a pie? pie? Like a pie. Like a pie. Okay. Now this is the cartoon that we carry with us for this circuit. The darker the ball, the, the higher the electric potential energy that Coulomb is. And so you see that those Coulombs pick up 12 joules in the battery, they dump off 6 joules in the first bulb, and 6 joules in the second bulb. And go back for more. Now, I'd like, to, I'd like to make an analogy that hopefully will resonate with us. We all recognize this is our valley. We're lucky to live here. Um, suppose we start here on campus, and a magical, mystical plane, we can't understand how it works, takes us to the top of the mountain and drops us off. Now that magical, mystical plane that we can't possibly understand has magically delivered to each of us uh, gravitational potential energy. And the average amount of gravitational potential energy per person is going to be the mass of the average person, 75 kilograms, not me, times g times the height and the magical plane took us up 1,000 meters. So that means on average we have given each person, the plane has, 750,000 joules of gravitational potential energy. Now, the easiest way to get back to campus is along the ridge, over the M, and down Rouse Street. And the question is, what would be the change in gravitational potential energy along that path. Negative 750,000 joules for each person on average. Okay? What goes up must come down. If you're ending up in the same location you started, you had to have just as much elevation drop as you had elevation gain in the magical plane. Now, that is a nice, easy path, but it's not the only path that uh, is going to get us 
uh, back to campus. Most of us are going to take that easy path, but not Valerie. <laughs> Valerie sees that there is another way to go, and so she chooses this path here. Okay? Now, what is going to be the change in gravitational potential energy per person along that path? Yes. Yeah, the same. Still negative 750,000 joules for each person. Okay? Now, because that path along the ridge is the easy path, the low resistance path, we get most of us going that way, a high current, a high flow, if you will. On the hard path, the high resistance path, we only get Valerie going that way. It has a small current going that way. Now, folks, my question to you is this. Where is the plane? The battery. The battery. Instead of taking people to the top of a mountain, it takes coulombs to the top of an electrical mountain through a process that we cannot possibly understand unless we are in the chemistry building. It is <laughs> mystical. Okay? It involves chemistry. Now, once we get to the top of the cliff, we don't all have to come back to the bottom of the cliff along the same path. Okay? Now, which is the easy path? Yeah, this one's the easy path, and this is the hard path down the cliff. But they both get us back to campus, do they not? Now, how bright are the bulbs? Well, I got a, a really bright bulb with two dim bulbs here. Now let's think about why they're bright, okay? One way to think of it is the voltage. If I measure the voltage across the battery, I get 12 volts. If I measure the voltage across that bulb, I get 12 volts. If I measure the voltage across that dimmer bulb, I get 6 volts. And that's always, always, always going to be the case. When you have identical bulbs, and those are the only kind we'll use in this class, when you have identical bulbs, if one is bright and one is dim, there will always be more volts across the brighter bulb. Now, let's look at current. Well, the fact that this is a brighter bulb means there's more current going through it. The fact that these are dimmer bulbs means that there's less current through it. This is the other, the entire class except for Valerie. This is Valerie, and the current through the battery, the people that got on the plane, it's all y'all, okay? All y'all, okay? Everybody in the class. Now, suddenly we see that there's two ways to interpret a brighter bulb. More flow, more glow means that the brighter bulb has more current going through it. If it's brighter, it also has more volts across it. We say more volt, more jolt. We tried to find something a little bit catchier than that, but that's the best we could do. Okay? Now these are not unrelated. The voltage difference, the voltage difference across the bulb is what's driving the current. That's what's pushing it through the bulb. If I've got more volts across the bulb, I'm driving more current through the bulb. Okay? So they're not unrelated. Now, our current model took us a long time to develop. It had a lot of different bits and pieces. It was fairly complex. The voltage model is just trivial by comparison. This is all that's there. Voltage is how much energy, electric potential energy, that a Coulomb gains going through the battery or loses going through a bulb or a resistor. Now folks, we want to be really careful with our language. I'm careful with my language. I ask you to be careful with your language as well. Whenever we're talking about voltage, we really mean voltage difference from point A to point B. 
And so when we're talking about voltage, it's always the voltage across the bulb, from one side of the bulb to the other. It's the voltage across the battery, from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. When we talk about current, it's the current through the bulb. It's the current through the battery. Now when we get to that next midterm, I'm going to instruct my grader, graders, any sentence that has volts and through in the same sentence, we're just going to scratch it out and not grade it. It's as if you never wrote it. Okay, we'll throw it away. Okay, we're almost done with this model. More voltage, more glow, or more volt, more jolt. The brighter the bulb, the more volts across it. And this is the last piece. What goes up must come down. The voltage rise across the battery is going to equal the voltage drop around any path from one side of the battery to the other. Just like you can't go to school and back and go uphill more than you come downhill, the same thing is true when you go around a complete circle in, a, in an electric circuit. You can't go up more volts than you come down. It's impossible. Okay? Now let's see if we understand this principle. I have a simple circuit. It's hooked to a 12 volt battery. And if I ask you to rank the bulbs, you know that that top bulb is brighter than the other two. It's an indicator bulb getting all of the flow through the current, uh, through the battery. The other two each get half. So the question is, what's the voltage across bulb A? Is it greater than 6, equal to 6, or less than 6 volts with your clicker? Which is it? Six. Now some of us said equal to six. The problem is some of us are using a different model. Some of us are saying all the voltages of A, B, and C have to add up to 12. Some of us are saying just A and B have to add up to 12. Which is the correct model? Argue with your neighbor real quick. Which is the correct model? Did any one of us come down on both paths? No, we all either took the easy path down the ridge or the hard path down the cliff. We did not, any of us, take both. Likewise, if we take an electron, paint them green, call them Fred, Fred has to go through. Well, first of all, the magical plane takes him to the top of the cliff. Fred has to go through A. He has to fall through that drop. But then, he can either go through B or through C, but not both. So that means that the journey by Fred is either going to be A and B, and that's got to add up to the 12 volts, or it's going to be A and C, and that's going to add up to the 12 volts. So the correct answer is, the one on the right is correct, the one on the left is garbage. Now, if this plus this has to add up to 12, and that's brighter than that bulb. What does that tell me about the volts across bulb A? Well, it's got to be bigger than half, bigger than six. And so the correct answer is A. Okay? Now, here's another way of looking at it, another perspective. If we think of voltage as the battery's 
ability to push the oomph, if you will, the oomph of the battery. There's only so much oomph, 12 volts. Now, that oomph has to be spent getting coulombs through boxes that are hard to get through, that are obstacles, resistance to the flow. Now I look for things that are in series. Is A in series with B? No or heck no? Heck no. What is A in series with? The network of B and C. Now that means that the battery has to get the same number of coulombs through this box containing A each second as it gets through this box containing B and C each second. The current has to be the same through both boxes because they're in series. Now, how does that oomph of the battery get divided up? Well, I find if I measure the voltage across the boxes that I get a bigger measurement across the top box. How do I know that? Well, that's a brighter bulb. Brighter bulb means more volts. Okay? Now, which of those boxes, the top one or the bottom one, is harder to get through? Top one. The top one. Two paths in parallel are twice as easy as a single path, and so that means the greatest resistance is the top one. Now, here's the idea. For series networks, and this is only true for series, only true for series, the voltage drop is greater across the larger resistance. Now think, if you will, about a simple circuit. Oh, I did not write that. I had been betrayed by my brothers. Oh, I will speak with them. Okay. If I have three identical bulbs in a series circuit, and it's a 12-volt battery, they're all going to be equally dim, are they not? And that means that they're each going to have the same voltage drop across them, and that voltage has to add up to 12. So that's going to be 4 volts, 4 volts, 4 volts. Now if I were to arbitrarily put these two in a box, box A, and I put this one in a box, box B, I would say that box A has twice the resistance of box B, would I not? And if I measure the voltage across box A, what would I get from here to here? Eight volts in the circuit. And one third of the battery's oomph is dedicated to get coulombs through it. Check that your neighbor's on the bus. Okay. This is where it gets good. This is where I show you how to solve the pizza problem. We could not compare B versus D. B, because B got all of the small, D got more than half of the large. Let's use voltage. If that's a 12 volt battery, A and B are in series. They're gonna be just as bright as each other. And so that means they have to be six volts and six volts. It's got to add up to 12, and they're just as bright as each other. Now, with the current model, you decided that C had to be brighter than A. That it was the indicator for the easy branch, and A was the indicator for the hard branch. Now, if C is brighter than A, it's got to have more volts across it than A. That's got to be bigger than 6. Now. I'm going to put a number to that. Eight. I made that up. I pulled it out of my right ear. Okay? If that's eight volts, what's that? Four. 
Four. And what's it across this ball? Two. Two. And two. Every path has to add up to 12. That would be 8 plus 4 is 12. 8 plus 2 plus 2 is 12. Now, folks, what I just did is a dangerous thing to do. Because my model doesn't say it is 8. My right ear said it was 8. And I don't always believe it. Okay? I made that number up. Sometimes when you make numbers up, you can convince yourself of wrong physics. All we know for sure with this model of ours is it's got to be bigger than 6. And that means that D has to be less than 6 volts. If I'm comparing 6 volts to less than 6 volts, that's easy enough. Okay? B is going to be brighter. Now, the way we would argue that on an exam is I would choose a path that went through B from one side of the battery to the other. And then I would find a path that went through D from one side of the battery to the other. Since both of these paths have to add up to the 12 volts of the battery, they have to be equal to each other. Now if I am trying to compare B versus D, the first thing I have to do is compare A versus C. If I know that C is brighter than A, then the inequality goes that way. If I compare B and D, I mean this has to be equal. So if the inequality is going this way for this pair, it's got to go the other way for the other pair. You and your sister fight me and my brother, and it's a tie. If, if your sister gets beat by my brother, what's, what's going to happen between you and me? Did that help? Not at all. <laughs> it was close. The fight was a tie. Okay. Now, let's look at this. Uh, observation from last day. We found that any branches that had their own connection with nothing but wire to both sides of the battery were independent. That you could hit both B with a hammer crushing it, these guys would not care, would not even register a flicker. Now we understand why. These guys, if they've got wire connections to both sides of the battery, have 12 volts across them, come heck or high water. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do over there. I still got 12 volts across these guys. Now, as soon as I put in that indicator bulb, the independence goes away. Let's see why. Okay, last day we could not tell, we had a pizza problem, we could not tell what happens to A when we close the switch. Well, let's do it. We close the switch, what happens to the current through the battery? It goes up. I've added a path. I've made it easier for current to flow. Now that means that indicator bulb is going to get brighter. If the bulb gets brighter, what happens to the volts across it? They go up. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Any path has to add up to the battery voltage. That means the voltage across the indicator ball plus the voltage across A plus the voltage across B has to add up to the 12 volts of the battery. If the indicator bulb gets brighter when I close that switch, it's still got to add up to 12 volts. It's a zero-sum game. If there's winners, there's got to be losers. If we close the door, the, the money in the room has to be conserved. If I walk out of this room with more money than I had when I walked in, you walk out with less. Okay? That's the way politics works. <laughs> now, 
That means that A and B have to get dimmer. Well, couldn't A get dimmer and B get brighter, or B get dimmer and A get brighter? No, because B is always going to get half the current through A. Whatever A does, B is going to do the same. If A gets dimmer, B gets dimmer. If A gets brighter, B gets brighter. So these two have to go the same direction. Now, folks, that would be considered a full credit answer on an exam, saying why A gets dimmer. It looks like Egyptian hier hieroglyphics, but it speaks to me, and I hope it speaks to you. So the voltage across A gets smaller, and A gets dimmer. Are there questions about that? OK. Now, we have six minutes and one problem left, front and back. We could not, with our current model, rank D versus E. OK? Now, whenever you are using a voltage model to compare two different bulbs, in this case, D and E, you pick one path that goes from one side of the battery through one bulb, and another path from one side of the battery that goes through the other bulb. Okay? So in this case, the purple path would be A plus B plus D. The blue path would be A plus C plus E. And whenever I say V, I mean delta V. Just give me a break here. Now, both of these paths add up to the 12 volts of the battery, and so they have to be equal to each other. Now it's just mathematics. If I have VA on both sides, I can cancel it out. Now think about what that means. That means not only do I have the same voltage along any path from one side of the battery to the other, but from any path or any point to any other point, regardless of the paths that go between them, I have the same voltage. If two paths are parallel, it's like two paths to get down to the, the parking lot from the M. There's one that does a switch back like this and one that goes straight down. The change in elevation is going to be the same for both. Likewise, the, same of, of this, the change in voltage is going to be the same for this path or this path, as long as they start at the same point and end at the same point. Now, if I want to compare D to E, the first thing I do is compare the other two. If I know from the current model that C is brighter than B, then that means when I compare D and E, if the inequality goes this way, it's got to go the other way to give me the equal sign. Now, three minutes, one more problem, the back of that same page. We could not predict what happened to bold C. There were two changes going on at once that were fighting each other. Now in this case, I'm not comparing bulb C to another bulb. I'm comparing it to itself before the change and after the change. Before I add that wire and after I add that wire. So I only do one path, a path from one side of the battery to the other that goes through bulb C. A plus C plus E has to equal the 12 volts of the battery. I then ask, when I short out bulb B, what happens to bulb A? Well, it gets brighter. It's an indicator for the battery. More current goes through the battery. E always gets half the current through C, so whatever C does, E does. Well, in order for this to be 12 volts, these guys have to get smaller. It's a zero-sum 
game. One wins, the others lose. Check that your neighbor's on the bus with this, that your neighbor could use the voltage model to solve pizza problems. Oh.